Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in on my week two about the General Assembly Coding Bootcamp. So today we'll talk more about week two and just to jump right into it, um, it was a continuation obviously of week one. Um, we talked about this keyword, we talked about and started doing whiteboarding challenges, which uh, for those of you who don't know, apparently during technical interviews when you're looking for software engineering uh, positions, one part of the actual interview is called a whiteboard challenge and that is when they actually give you a whiteboard they give you something to solve and you're supposed to write out um, how you would actually solve it without a computer um, and essentially uh, from what i've been told it's just to find out and see how you logically think how you logically work through a project problem <laughs> excuse me and for you to understand the process in general to make sure that you do have some kind of understanding of what you're doing. Um, so we started practicing with that and with groups um, that they had already placed us in. And then um, we were terrible at it. <laughs> we were very terrible at it. But now that it's been a while, I think we're, we'll be a lot better at it. Um, but I was terrible at it. Um, so I ended up being the driver. And essentially, when you're doing a group challenge, what ends up happening is that um, one person will drive and in that sense that means that they will um they'll control the mouse and type while everybody else is doing research behind the scenes and um trying and telling you what to type that's a group challenge so it's a little bit different from the whiteboarding challenge in that um usually with the whiteboarding challenge you're just by yourself whereas for us with this boot camp the group challenges were together in a group but obviously via zoom since um we're in a panty and um, other things that we were introduced to were CSS um, and so CSS Flexbox, CSS Grid in prep for week three, which is our project week. And um, I had a little bit of familiarity with that because like I said, I, I, I taught myself how to code or at least program a little bit prior to this uh, boot camp. So I feel like that, that since that's all front end, that was a little bit easier and smoother for me to um, pick up because I had I had some experience with it and um yeah so that was pretty much week two um we also got introduced to Chrome Dev Tools, which I had touched also a little bit but I wasn't a hundred percent familiar with how it worked um I had an idea of like uh query selectors and element grabbing elements by ID but finding the relevance in it prior to the boot camp was a little difficult for me so I'm glad we got um exposure to that prior to actually starting or prior to week three which um we were introduced that we were going to be building a game um and i'll go more into that during my week three video um but besides that um we also went over array iterators and i actually i like arrays um i don't know why i like arrays which is i know it's weird to say that you like something like in particular but i do like arrays so we went over array iterator methods and how to like pull things out using like array this, array some, how to um, pull things out based on what you're trying to pull out of an array um, using index, if you know the index, if you don't know the index, um, things like that. So I think that this week, like to sum it up, was just a accumulation of us trying to figure out what exactly was in javascript and this was helping us so that for week three it was giving us the introduction that we would need because we were going to have all of week three to build this project and kind of put it together um so yeah so that was week two now week three ghetto <laughs> Uh, they gave us options to choose for a game, and so my game was Mancala. And if it was a good game, then I would link it below. But when I say I struggled, um, I had struggled the entire week three. It was I uh, I could I attribute it to several things, um, and I will go more in detail about one of those things in a later video. But one of the other things that I think contributed to why I struggled so much during project week was because I was not sleeping like I was supposed to because I was so stressed out and normally I'm not a I would not call myself a stressed person I would not call myself somebody who um who you know who doesn't who I would say that I'm I am not somebody who get stressed out and can't think. I got stressed out and couldn't think. And I don't know if it's because I've been wanting to become a software engineer for a while that like now that it's finally happening or like the wheels are starting um, that 
I was just panicking because I was like, I can't finish this project. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I think that the other thing that I will talk about but as to why um, I think contributed to why I feel the way that I felt during project week, um, both of those things along with sleeping, sleeping issues, I think is the reason why um, project week was such a struggle for me. And this is the first project. So they tell us that, you know, it's only going to get harder from here with our other projects. And I'm, I'm already panicking because... Uh, or I was panicking because um, I was struggling during project one and I'm like, okay, if I'm struggling now, wait till, uh, wait till project four, or project three, you know? Um, so I was just, I was a mess. I wasn't sleeping. I was making careless mistakes. So I would say for project week, uh, for week three, I would definitely say to get, make sure you get enough rest. Um, definitely utilize the professors or your teachers more, the teaching assistant more. That's something that I don't think I latched onto until the very end. Um, of the week towards we were presenting on Friday. So I, um, I did not, I did not latch on to that as much as I probably should have. And because of that, um, I think is why like I felt so like crash and burn by the time uh, Friday rolled around. So words and tips of advice, I would definitely say to utilize, like even if you don't know if you will have an issue because we had to sign up via office hours. And so, you know, for me, I think there were, we were down to 11 people in my class. I think we're down to 11 people. We might be down more now, but I think we're down to 11 people. And even though it's a small number of people, you know, the, the professors and the teaching assistant only have so many time slots, only, only have so many um, hours to give. They're not instructing us that week. I think they instructed us on how to put our projects on GitHub pages. Um, and that's about it. I think I think they gave us another short little lecture on something. Oh, how to update it, but how to update get get our stuff on GitHub pages. I think what I'll do is I'll end up fixing my game and finalizing the game and cleaning it up and making it look nice. And then I will definitely link below um, my game sometime in the future. It's probably not going to be for a while. Maybe once this program's over, um, I'll go back. I definitely want to fix it up so you guys have an idea of what it looks like and I'll make my edits and um, commits. So actually maybe I'll, I'll try and put it up sometime within the next few weeks. At least you can see the rough draft and then um, you'll see the game and my readme and everything like that. So um, yeah, project week was very rough for me. Um, and we took an assessment at the end and I will tell you about that in week four. Um, but for project week, I, I would say another tip of advice is to um, solidify what you don't know um, and use that week to really ask your classmates. My classmates were very helpful. And if somebody's doing a project similar to yours, because for the most part, we had to pick from a list, but you could get approved to doing another game. We've all kind of shared what games we had. So another tip would be to work with the classmate that has, um, a game similar to yours. Obviously your code can't be the same, but if there's something you're struggling with, and again, I was saying, I don't think I finished my thought, but what I was saying is that they only have so many hours in the day, the, the teaching assistants and the professors. So it's, it's better, even if you don't have a question to go ahead and put your name down. Um, that's something I learned towards the end. Go ahead and put your name on their schedule because once you do have a question, you're going to realize that they don't even have, um, room on their for their office hours for you for that day so you have to either pause wait another day or you know you can spend your time trying to figure it out yourself but if your professor can kind of lead you in a better direction that will save you a lot of time so my recommendation with that would be to um definitely like even if you don't know if you have a question just go ahead and put down your name and then you, you'll be surprised how often that i put my name down and then a question or something did come up or I was running into a bug, I was running into an issue. Um, and then I would definitely say, if you're not able to get onto their schedule like you want to, go ahead and just work with your classmates, even the ones that are doing different games. Sometimes you might just need them to check your code. Like, hey, this isn't working like it's supposed to. Can you just check your code, check my code real quick? We don't have class during the week. So we do check-ins and then um, we did check-ins, but we're not actually in class during the week. so. Uh, we had Zoom morning and evening check-ins, or morning and evening for me, since I'm on the West Coast. I'm in the East Coast, but I'm taking a West Coast class. So it was morning and evening for me. But I would say that um, 
yeah, definitely work with your classmates on both time zones and both schedules. You, you'll be surprised who, who who will help you debug. Even if they're doing a completely different game, you'll be surprised at who can um, help you with that. And lastly, what I will say is do not be like me. So me being me and being ambitious, I picked, we had games on levels one through 10 that they, they ranked it. And I picked a level seven game. And I ended up figuring it out at the end, but considering that I didn't do some of the weekend projects that they had recommended, and I'll go into later detail in a different video why I didn't do those projects. Um, because I didn't do that, I feel like I kind of was at a disadvantage. And so for me to have picked a seven, I think mentally I had the capability of building a level seven game, but I didn't have the like practic practicality or like I had, I didn't have the experience of actually building a game before I went into project week. Um, so I would recommend that looking back, I wish I had picked like a level one, a level two game, because even though I could think I could have done a seven and we'll always have that list, right? So I can always go back to the list and I can go back. And now that I've built level two game, I can pick, I can pick a level seven game, but I think I was a little too ambitious for project week. And I think that ended up kicking my butt considering I didn't do the projects prior. And, um, I think JavaScript, I understood it, but I don't think I had as solid, solid as a foundation as I may have needed to actually complete level seven game. Um, so yeah, so um, lastly, like uh, on top of not being like me, I would definitely say that um, uh, my biggest mistake and biggest challenge was that I don't know what I was thinking, but I decided to write out all my code and then like write it out and not debug at the same time. So by writing it out and putting it in the game, and then I was not I was wondering why it wasn't work. So naturally, apparently as a programmer, you're supposed to write a little bit of function, test it, write a little bit of function, test it, write a little bit, that's how you're supposed to go about it. So then obviously you catch your bugs as you're going and early, right? So me, no, I didn't do it. I wrote everything out. So then my, then when my game didn't work, I didn't even understand where, so I literally had to go back to the beginning. But you remember, I built all my game off of, a, like they're built in sequential order. So if there's an issue at the beginning, then that's gonna affect the rest of my code. And that's exactly what happened. So that's why I said I'm a little ambitious in that sense, because I spent a lot of time having to go back. I spent a lot of time writing the code, but then for me to not have to go back, debug, and try and figure out what was wrong with my code when I could have just been doing it like as I went, I think that was my biggest mistake. That not I think that was definitely my biggest mistake, my biggest regret. Um, and looking back, I learned I learned my lesson, and I just want to give you guys that recommendation that you know when it's your turn or if you're going through it right now don't be like me do it a little bit of a time don't be too ambitious um and really like have an honest conversation with yourself of your capabilities i know i'm capable of building the level 10 game but my skills just were not at that time where they needed to be and you know you can always challenge like i said you can always challenge yourself in the future you can um you know maybe I don't know if we're going to have time now, but maybe weeks to come or, you know, when the program's over, you want to go back and build the rest of those games. Like I'm very confident now just from like project week alone. I'm very confident now that I could actually probably go back and build this level seven game like that. Like what I was, I know I've already been through, but the whole point is these weeks have solidified what I've learned in the last two weeks prior or three weeks, two weeks prior to the project week. Um, so now I'm very confident that I won't get it immediately, but I definitely think that uh, my time building it will be definitely just greatly reduced. Um, and that's the accumulation of Project Week, uh, Week 2 and Project Week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got some good recommendations. Please leave any comments, suggestions. I do want to add to this channel some different videos like a day in the life and things like that. So. Be on the lookout for those, but I hope that whoever's on this journey with me, um, that you are toughening it out. Um, it's definitely been an, an emotional journey. It's definitely been a roller coaster, but you're here for a reason. I'm here for a reason, and I hopefully we'll get through this together. So with that being said, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week, and I hope that you guys enjoy this video. Enjoy your time. Have a good one.